I think today we have a, a great panel of speakers. They will all talk to us about how they are using geospatial technology. Today we have access to a lot of GIS information because of the web, because of the cloud, and because of the power of the platform that it provides us. So it's now a matter of being able to build the appropriate application on top of that platform that can be interoperable both from a horizontal and vertical perspective. It's no longer uh, unachievable to have applications that address our primary workflow needs. On our panel today, we have Dr. Joaquin Ramirez, who is the principal wildfire consultant for DTS, a good friend of mine. He has developed some applications in the wildfire prediction for planning and analysis as well as response, the best that I've ever seen. I think you'll enjoy his presentation. As we will save questions till the end for see how much time we have. And I would next like to introduce Dr. Joaquin Ramirez, who's going to show you some uh, really great examples of work that they're doing with wildfire prediction. Joaquin. Thank you, Russ. I'm really excited to be here in this Global Risk Forum in Davos. And I'm going to talk, talk a little about when the fire becomes an enemy, which is not all the time. And we were talking, Ryan was talking about knowledge, and that's what we've been trying to do the last 12 years, trying to put some knowledge, geospatial knowledge, on the fire business. So, okay. If you live in a wonderful country like Switzerland, maybe you won't think that this is so a global problem, but I'll tell you that it is. I'm going to show you uh, uh, images coming from the MODIS imagery, MODIS satellite, showing that this is really a world of fire. Oh, the music is terrible. Uh, well, I'll finish it. But the idea is that um, half of the area of Australia burns every year. 40% of the total emissions of CO2 comes from the man caused fires. Uh, so the problem is bigger, uh, it's getting bigger, it's, big, it's getting wilder. And it's getting, as you can see, some areas in Africa, some areas in South America, uh, there are seasonal fires that are becoming mm, an enemy, and I will say, uh, say how. Sorry, no more, please. I come from Spain. And this is the newspaper yesterday, 26th of August. We are living the worst summer in fighting with fires of the last 30 years. Uh, those are the numbers, the figures, 700, 750,000 million euros we spend every year to prevent fires, but we have already lost another close to half a million, uh, 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 half thousand of millions of euros again fighting these fires this season. Uh, actually, where I live, uh, this was last week. Last week, we had a fire of close to 13,000 hectares in Leon, in the northwest. In, in Spain, we are living a change of coming from the rural areas in the last 30 years to the urban areas. And that's a change that's change that is happening all over the world. And when people move from the rural areas to, to the cities, then the fires become bigger and then becomes an enemy. That, to fight against them, you have to have more than resources. You have to have a little of more knowledge than we used to have till now. So you also, the Valencia area, also Spain, you have this image from the MODIS today. Tomorrow you have another 11,000 um, extra fire that is affecting close to a city. And the next day you have another 5,000 uh, 5, hectares more fire, close to that one. So you have all the resources on one fire and then suddenly, boom, it appears. And then, of course, the domino effect, all the people evacuated also. And if you see the dimensions, okay, MODIS is another very high resolution satellite, but this is like a fireball of 11 kilometers di diameter, and you get that in hours. So that's the kind of problem we're facing. If we look to the uh, US statistics, as we can see, this line is telling us the number of fires in the last 40 years, which is decreasing because of the prevention policies and the wiser use of fire. But the surface, the area burned by those, by those fires are getting bigger. And why is that? Well, 
that is because we are facing an, a changing scenario. This environment, this is a prediction of where are we going in the, in the, in, with the climate change scenario in the last 100 years, and what's the problem, how the problem is changing. And it's changing in the worst, if we go to the red area, it's changing worse in most parts of the urban or developed areas. So that we call that a, a fire paradox, because the better we are fighting the fires, the bigger they get those that we cannot beat. So that's what we are facing now and more. And so while we, we are listening more and more that we are facing these mega fire problems. Resources, we invest in people, but you really, if you want, like, okay, a quote by Sun Tzu, everybody makes a quote by Sun Tzu. If you wanna just, if you know yourself and your enemy, then you're gonna, you, you're gonna be prepared. Uh, to, to, be, to battle these battles without jeopardy, without risk. Uh, but what happened with fire? Fire is a science which is very young. I used to say that the romance and the water science is an old science. We have examples coming from the romans 2,000 years ago. They built these aqueducts and they're still there. But what happened with fire science? Fire science is a very young science. In the last 50, 60 years, they started in, mainly in the US, Canada, and Australia in the fire lab mainly, and the fire behavior is, uh, well, I, I wanna show something of the very nice Swiss Tobo maps, but well, okay, they, right, they were right reserved, so I show some of the very grand panoramas of the Alps. Uh, the fire behavior, I was saying, that has to deal with uh, complex modeling. Uh, first, we have to, to deal with modeling involving topography, in model, involving weather predictions, which are becoming more extreme, it has to deal with the fuels and the vegetation and land use that is becoming also overstocked because the change of the land use and the protection policies also. And that mix is creating this extreme behavior of fires. And as you can see, this is a photo picture of the LA, uh, the LA and the, the station fire not so far ago. So we deal with that with science. Uh, we call it a science and, a, and, and art, the art of fire simulation tries to solve these questions with most of them are geospatial questions. Where the fire is gonna be in the next hour? How we can expect to stop it? With how many resources? Or what's the risk to this community? All those questions that are put into the, the, the table of the incident commander have this geospatial answer. There's been a lot of analysis, a lot of efforts on the science community. The Sullivan reviews of the International Journal of Wild and Fire just in the last uh, uh, in 15 years, close to 70 different fire models. So the models and the sciences are there. But we really need to take those models out from the lab to where people need them, to the operation personnel who can see, okay, can do the evaluation of the risk that is uh, uh, affecting my community. And this is a, an analysis which is called evacuation time. This is a, an analysis we developed uh, on the tool that I'm gonna show. But we have also to provide that information to the incident command post to support safer operations. Because the users really expect now in the time of, um, in the, in the moment that we're living, they, want, they really want relevant information and convert that into knowledge. They want to know what they're gonna get in the right time at the, in, uh, in, in, and they want to know what's the risk of the evacuation time of my community, and they want to do it, and they want to have it in the table now. So in a European Commission project uh, called uh, Preview, I have some colleagues that we, we collaborated there, we built this project, uh, we, we built the basis of this tool, which is called Wildfire Analyze. The idea was to provide wildfire simulations, all that the force can done by the scientific community provided to the first responders and to the planning practitioners. So that was what we did. And we presented that in, in wildfire meeting in South Africa in several scientific uh, meetings because it's based basically on the model that I, uh, that I told you out there. Actually, this is a model based on rotor mills, but to make it efficient and relevant and, uh, and in a way that they can use it. So we, we prepare uh, fire line intensity analysis, flame length, but everything in a common operational picture that they can use. 
but they also, also there is a need. That's a tool for specialists. There's also a need for many more people. We are also, all of us are geo-aware. And we need that information in a way that is fast. In a way that is intuitive, like, for example, an iPad and the kids using that. And we can do it now because we have powerful tools. Uh, an, I, an iPhone has as much, three iPhones has as much as computing power like they, they had in the Apollo and the, and the, uh, on the Discovery, uh, on the Discovery Shadow. So the power is out there, but also the users expect that is easy. So then we move from the desktop application and then when we arrive to the power of the cloud the power to be anywhere with technology that making simple things, we make the black magic behind, all the sciences behind that, and then you get results like that. And we put that into a portal which is called Wildfire Maps. So that, uh, that has allowed us to reach more people who really need an evaluation. They don't need to be a specialist, but they have, to, they have to know and trust that there is a good science behind that, and really have, want to use it like they are used to, to use their iPhone or the iPad. So we just click on a map, we harvest the data from the existing national weather services or weather predictions, and we do all that black magic with the power that there is in the cloud, and we serve it in the way that they need, and in a relevant way and in a convenient way. Oh, and after we get the simulation, actually this is a simulation in La Jolla area, and it takes about that one minute, uh, then we can make an, an analysis, which is what, uh, what says, which I need. Okay, the fire is going to get there, but what that's involved to me? Well, that involves, I can make an analysis with the Esri Business Analysis Online, an analysis of what's the parcels which has been affected. How many people? Do you saw the demonstration that made Jeff so, so easily? How many people can be affected? What's the values at risk? What, uh, and that information is absolutely relevant to take the decision that should be taken during the incident. So let me show you uh, an example, a couple of examples of how to make this in a real way. One is the Whitewater Baldi complex. It was in New Mexico this season. It was two months ago. Kristen Allison, she's the fire behavior analyst of the, of the Bureau of Land Management, and it was a huge incident, 100,000 hectares. And every day, as you can see, this is the New Mexico state. This is, okay, well, it's just kilometers. Where is Switzerland? <laughs> okay. That's about 300 miles. And this is the fire, and these are the dimensions of these monsters that we are facing. So what we were doing is every day, based on IR imagery, we took the hotspots and then do predictions on what the fire may do based on what the satellites told us the last 12 hours. And that, that, uh, that incident was, was used by that, uh, was followed and tracked by this. And the last one that I want to show you is an incident that we had in La Jonquera in Spain. It was a fire that was, wasn't so big, but it was very intense. It was a fire that broke the, the, the border between Spain and France. A monster like this, that's the, we have only two roads, you know, we, do, we don't have so many roads between France and Spain. And we have this, uh, we had the con communication broken. We had this kind of the scenes, people running for their life. Actually, two people died escaping from the fire. So Marc Casteno, uh, he's the analyst chief of the Catalonian firefighters, and he had to deal with a fire that burned 30,000 acres in four hours, surrounding in an area that, surrounding, that was very close to touristic areas. And he had to do this strategic analysis in 20 minutes. So he did it. This is Mark, this is the minister, the, the, the president of Catalonia, and these, are, these people here are the mayors. And this is the analysis that he did. It was the fire like here, and in this area here, the wind was coming in this direction in the beginning, this area here is all touristic areas. You know, well, all the, the Dali, the Dali villages in the north part of Catalonia. And this area here was just the mountains. But the fire has a potential, because the wind was changing, to grow in this direction. And they had, had the potential to grow up in 50,000 hectares in two days. So they have these measures of people, of urbanization tourists here, and they, they said, okay, we need the resources, we need the helicopters in over our heads. And Mark said, okay, no, the fire is gonna go here, so what do we do? 
Uh, okay, the good thing is that the, he, could, he could convince them because on this quantitative, quantitative analysis at the right time, at the right place, he could get the 60% the of the resources reallocated within the simulation. So, okay, I think that that helped because, and, and he could do that because there was science behind that and there was a quantitative response, an appropriate response to the first, for the, uh, for the politicians and the leadership at the right time. So, okay, these are our contacts. We will be around there. And more information is in our websites out there. And just a final thought uh, that came from Margaret Thatcher, who said, okay, it pays to know the enemy, not least because of some time you may have the opportunity to turn him into a friend. Because as I said, okay, fire is an enemy, but sometimes it's a friend on our side. So thank you for, uh, for your attention, and, and I'll be ready for any answers after you. Thank you. So it's interesting for me uh, to see Joaquin perform fire prediction analysis that's science-based in such a short period of time that can now be distributed to so many people. That used to take hours and hours, and seldom could we use it effectively in a response kind of environment. But not only can it be used for a response environment, but it can be used by local planners at local communities to demonstrate visually what could happen and why people need to be prepared. And what are the mitigation requirements to reduce the potential impacts? The planning capability for this application is immense. So I, I, I really like your application, Joaquin. Okay. 